big event on the Friday of WrestleMania weekend, and that is yes. NXT Take Over New York. Woo! And NXT Take Over New York uh, being on the Friday, like I said before, not the Saturday before WrestleMania this year. Thank and, you. Um, and with that being said, just like that, look at this new layout for you guys watching the video version. So we're into the takeover layout here. You see Black and Ricochet on the left, Cole and Dream on the right. Um, so we have actually a total of five matches for NXT TakeOver uh, New York, Michael. Um, we have the War Raiders against Aleister Black and Ricochet for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Uh, Pete Dunne versus Walter. Oh, for the UK Championship, the uh, United Kingdom Championship. That should be a good match. I'm hearing a lot of good things out of Walter. I'm not too familiar with him, uh, but from what I get uh, from the UK wrestling fans, um, he's actually really good, and him and Dunner are set to have a really good match, apparently. So I can't wait for that. Um, Velveteen Dream versus Matt Riddle for the uh, NXT North American Championship. Uh, Shayna Baszler versus Bianca Belair versus Io Shirai versus Kari Zane fail four way for the NXT Women's Championship, and the uh, certified are uh, sure to be main event Johnny Gargano Adam Cole two to three falls NXT Championship so stacked stacked wrestle or wrestle uh, <laughs> uh, NXT Takeover card uh, this year Michael um, I'm excited for it I'm pumped. Um, Let's get right into it, and we'll start off with the NXT Tag Team Championships. Uh, the War Raiders facing off against the uh, uh, winners of the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic, Aleister Black and Ricochet. Hopefully not the future tag team of Ricochet and Black, because it's still weird to me that these two single guys are still a team on the main roster. Um, so hopefully this is the end of that. Or if they have a WrestleMania match. Hopefully that's the end of that as well. Um, I'm expecting good things out of this match. Obviously with the, uh, man, Black and Ricochet's chemistry, even if you've been watching, if you haven't been watching them on Raw, um, I've been paying close attention to them on the main roster. Their chemistry has been really good. I'm liking a lot of their synchronized moves together with their flips, like their fake outs. And, um, Ricochet is literally the human cheat code. I don't know if anyone's missed their fast lane match. The fast lane match is probably the best match on the card. Um, Ricochet is just insane. Like he is, the shit he pulls off in the ring is just amazing. And he screams money. I hope that everybody sees the potential in this guy to be a sing a good singles guy. Like he he's the size of an AJ Styles. It's not like they can blame it on his size here. He's got the charisma. He's got the look. He's got the moves. He just again, like I have said before, he needs to build his mic skills a little bit more. After that, money, money with this guy. Um, he'll be the best watch superstar on 205 Live, thanks to Vince. So yeah, Rick Shea, 205 <laughs> Live, yeah. Oh, uh, please don't, please don't. <laughs> Anyways, um, I guess it goes back to what you said, and I, I've literally thought about it and agree with it, Michael. It wouldn't make sense for Black and Ricochet to win the titles here when they're basically on the way out. However, if this stops them from going to the main roster, give them the freaking tag team titles, I mean, okay? I'd be all for it. <laughs> Do it! But all signs are pointing towards them for sure yeah. now being mm -hmm. on the main roster with the injury to Tommaso Ciampa. So um, I'm sadly going to have to pick the War Raiders because I would love to see Alistair Black and Ricochet keep going and maybe you know, who knows we might see them. But their characters alone are singles characters. They're not tag team wrestlers. They work well to, in the ring together because they're both phenomenal athletes and phenomenal wrestlers. But as tag teams, uh, it's got to stop them eventually. And I think it'll still be a good match. I think we're still going to get a really good, decent match out of both these guys. So uh, I do predict an interference. Mm -mm. I don't think this is going to go down clean. I can't see this going down clean, especially with two babyface teams in the ring. Mm -hmm. Can't see it. Um... I don't think it's going to be like a split up of Black and Ricochet. I think the Undisputed Era's Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, who are kept off this card, are going to have something to do with this. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like they're going to get involved some way. Mm. Either that or a new team that we don't even know if they've signed randomly out of somewhere is going to make a, an impact here. I just I can't see this match being just a clean win. That's it. Like the. You, with two babyface teams, it's it's just weird. I could and I I'm 
kind of on both sides. I can see them doing something like that and then just have the War Raiders, you know, shake the hands of Black and Ricochet. And, you know, you guys are, you know, you've earned our respect. But uh, I'm I'm going to stick with my prediction. I think Undisputed Era is going to get involved here. And that's okay. going to set up the future feud for those tag titles. So I will be going with War Raiders. I'll be going with War Raiders too. My prediction is basically like yours, but I have the interference being done by none other than the revival from WWE. Ooh, wait, what? Especially, yeah, no. So, because here's the thing: um, revival and Aleister Black and Ricochet have they've been feuding on Monday Night Raw, and I'm very surprised they didn't announce a WrestleMania match between the Raw uh, between the, the revival and Aleister Black and Ricochet for Raw's Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania. So, here's the thing. If and, and and it's one full week, guys. Um, I can only assume Alistair Black and Ricochet will appear on this week's Monday Night Raw. If they do announce and make it official that Alistair Black and Ricochet will also be fighting the Revival for the Raw Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania, I'm putting it down, guys, that the Revival will be invading NXT Takeover just to screw Alistair Black and Ricochet Ooh. out of their tag titles. All right. Yeah. So there That's, you go. Uh... You heard it here. Okay. Like a whole kind of Seth Rollins thing. Yeah. Who's the takeover, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm surprised Batista didn't do it. Guys, this is why I should be writing a show. Batista should have invaded NXT yeah. uh, and invade Triple H's little baby. He still can. We got still got one week. I know. Still they got could, one week. They, you know where it made sense? When he was holding the title and he announced the whole Ciampa having to relinquish it at the end of yes. that. That would have been the perfect spot. So, uh Good prediction. I like that. I really like that. So uh, yours is good too. You never know. Could yeah. happen. So, but we both agree that an inter- interference is going down. Otherwise, mm-hmm. if it's a straight up victory by War Raiders, you can tell they. Bland. Yeah, but I mean, it could be like they want to establish that this is the top team, and Alistair Black and Ricochet who are leaving. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure they're 100 percent down to do it. You know, basically okay. saying we're putting over this team. Uh, we're on our way out. I like your idea about how they shake hands afterwards. So it'd be good. So we'll move on to match number two, and that is Pete Dunne versus Walter. Pete Dunne being the UK champion. Haven't been keeping up with this because it's hard to watch NXT UK. I, I, it's tough to even keep up with. There's so much wrestling during the week and time scheduling-wise. I wish I can um, because UK wrestlers are the shit, and I love their style. Um, but from what I'm get, gathering and people that who know Walter, who he is, He's really good, and this is basically like a WrestleMania type match for the and a current NXT UK division right now. So, Pete Dunne's facing off against Walter for the UK Championship match. I'm expecting a big match. I'm expecting a really good match. From what I'm gathering, uh, we already know about Pete Dunne and what he's all about. So, from what I'm gathering about Walter, um, I'm thinking we're going to get a really good, decent match here. Um, Pete Dunne's held this championship for a long time. Um. And from what I'm gathering and reading, because I need to, I basically need to read what people were going to be predicting and why to look into this to make my decision. Um, I'm going to be picking Walter here. I think Pete Dunn's held his championship a long time, and I don't know if their initial plans is to make him the longest reign, like keep him with this title so that he's like the longest reigning champion in history. I just, from what I'm gathering and people are saying about Walter, I think this guy's winning the championship. I think Pete Dunne's title reign is finally going to come to an end, especially at a big takeover like this. It just kind of makes sense in a way that this is where he would drop the title. So I'm going to go with Walter in this mm-hmm. case. Mm-hmm. I'm going to agree with you. Uh, I'm not a big fan of superstars who make debuts and lose. You know what I mean? So Walter just made his debut. I'm like you. I, I don't watch a lot of NXT UK, but I do know that Walter – just made his debut like probably like a month ago, so it just makes sense. He's the new guy uh, to beat the the reigning champion who cannot be beaten, and I feel like these two are gonna feud for a little bit afterwards. But I feel like Pete Dunne, he's gonna be moving up to the main roster. I'm guessing probably oh, around man. SummerSlam. SummerSlam, I'm thinking. Please go to SmackDown. Please go to SmackDown. Two of five live, bro. It's the place stop, to be. Stop. Come on. He beat Enzo <laughs> that one time. Remember? So. <laughs> Oh. No, no, but I, I totally agree with you. Guys, can you imagine Pete Dunne versus AJ Styles? Can you imagine Pete Dunne versus uh, um, Muhammad Ali, formerly known as Mustafa Ali, Ali, known as Ali? <laughs> like, but that'd be great. Lots so. of match types you can go through here. 
Um, we'll move on to the NXT North American Championship. This is a big match. Velveteen Dream versus Matt Riddle. Haven't seen... Bro, bro, bro. Yeah. Bro. Haven't seen two dynamics like this. I'm a huge Matt Riddle guy. I, I'm growing on this guy. Um, I can see this match being really good. The two dynamics out of these two guys is insane. Um, and we have... I don't think we've seen a match type like this. Especially, we haven't seen a guy like Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle is very unique style, and he's a very unique wrestler to NXT. As in, we haven't seen his style of wrestling before in NXT in a long time, or even ever. So, for him to go up against a guy like Valentin Dream, which we know what he's all about. We've seen Matt Riddle also in his his wrestling, and we know he's all about. We saw that big fail five way match. I think these two cats can go. I think we're going to see a really good match. I, Matt Riddle impressed me in that Fatal 5-Way. Velveteen Dream is impressive on his own, and he can definitely uh, help carry a match as well if he needs to carry it. For some reason, I don't see this match going to distance like a long time. I see it being a very short 10- to 12-minute match, maybe the shortest match on the card. Um, I do not see Matt Riddle win the championship just yet. I know he's undefeated, and it's very tough for him to not win the championship here. I just because Velveteen Dream's not going anywhere, and I think he needs a longer title reign than just this short reign. He's too good to have a, such a short title reign. I think it's gonna be a fuck finish. Well, it's gonna be. Bear in mind, not... Johnny Johnny Gargano only held that title for like what, like a week, two yeah. weeks. So, I think yeah. Velveteen Dream though is gonna. It's gonna be a fuck finish. He's gonna cheat to win. I think he, whether it's gonna be holding the tights. Or his foot would like Matt Riddle's foot was on the rope and the ref didn't see it. It's going to be that type of fuck finish. But Velveteen Dream is going to uh, retain the championship against Matt Riddle. It's not going to be a clean win. Mm. So that's my that's my prediction. Yeah, well, I agree with you on the fact that it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a straightforward finish. So just like you say, something is going to go down. Um, but. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Matt Riddle as well, and I just saw his uh, WWE special on on, uh, on the WWE Network. Um, but yeah, he's just on fire right now. He he's picked up the stuff really really fast. It's like you said, there's no one like him right now, at least for the males uh, superstars in NXT. Some of his mixed martial arts background, and uh, I'm gonna go with Matt Riddle because I just I, he's just doing so well, and I just don't want to see some guy who's doing so well right now loops. Um, but I, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's going to be a clear cut finish. I'm thinking maybe it might be something where perhaps, um, maybe the ref gets knocked down or the ref is like distracted and, uh, and maybe Matt Riddle puts him in his bro mission and Velveteen Dream taps out, but maybe the ref doesn't see it. And then maybe that's a way that Velveteen Dream could win. But for me, I'm a, I'm gonna go with Matt Riddle winning the thing. But just saying, if there if there's a way that Velveteen Dream can win, I can predict and maybe get him back into the heel side. Him tapping out when the ref wasn't looking or when the ref is knocked down, and then kind of like, you know, Matt Riddle let go of the bro mission and be like, hey man, I had him tapped out, and then, you know, roll him up. Okay. So okay. we'll see. I, I just don't want to see a straight up clean pin by Velveteen Dream on Matt Riddle. It just no. I don't want to see that. No, so, definitely not. But no, yeah. But for me, Matt Riddle, mm-hmm. I think it's good. So, yeah. Um, move on to the Fatal Four Way NXT Women's Championship: Baszler, Belair, Zayn, and Shirai. Huge Fatal Four Way match. This was decided because Shayna uh, got involved in the number one contenders match between uh, Shirai and ba- Baszler, and uh, basically because of her, her interfe- interference. Uh, uh, William Regal book the Fatal Four Way match. So this one's interesting uh, mm-hmm. in the case that it's going to be good. I think this match deserves a lot more credit than it's getting in terms of expectations. You have Kari Zane and Io Shirai, who are like the craziest high flying female wrestlers of NXT's women's division. Bianca Belair and her unique powerhouse style clashing with Shayna Baszler. We saw what they did at NXT Takeover Phoenix. Uh, that was actually, I mean, it was. A boring match in the case that there was no build up to it, so that kind of led to a boring match to get hype for. But if you really studied the match like I do when I was there watching live, I thought it was a good match. And um, I think that Baszler and Bianca basically their styles clash together, so we're definitely it's two similar styles going up against each other, so you're gonna get the same shit from both sides of the coin here. 
So those two mixed with the two high flyers, I think we're actually going to get a pretty decent match. So I'm expecting big things. From what I'm gathering, Baszler's getting called up to the main roster after WrestleMania. Um, so I think she's dropping the title belt here. Um, I think Belair pulls it off here, finally. I think Belair's going to, whether it's, and I don't think she does it clean. I think it's someone does a finisher on somebody and she steals the victory. She attacks whoever, the one that did the finisher. She attacks them, throws them out of the ring, and then pins the person that got finishered on. Or she, after that, she does her finisher on top of that. So I can't see Vel- Bianca, sorry, Velveteen, <laughs> Bianca Belair winning clean. It's going to be in some sort of fuck finish, cheating style of a win. But I'm predicting Shayna to drop the title belt here and getting, and it sucks because I went two sides with this and I'm picking this side. The other side of mine was she retains and gets called up to the main roster while relinquishing the belt like previous people have done before, like Asuka, mm-hmm. like Paige. Uh, getting called up without losing the actual title belt. And I could see that happening because she's good enough for that reason alone. But I'm going to go with the Bianca Belair uh, cheating win for the championship. She's not going to pin Shayna. Shayna will not mm-hmm. be pinned in this match. So, Yep, I totally agree. I'm going with Bianca Belair too. Um, I completely agree with you. Shayna Baser, I feel, will go, uh, go up to the main roster. I, I'm, I'm predicting she is going to be in the uh, women's WrestleMania Battle Royale. and um, Bro, she and... should show up on Raw after Mania, and if Becky wins, mm-hmm. just show up and beat the shit out of Becky. That'd yeah. That'd be nuts. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Um, Bianca Belair, I just feel like – and uh, Kyle, I think you agree. Bianca Belair just seems like the right woman to uh, to carry the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, over Io Shirai and Kari Zayn because yeah. it, it just it just makes better sense. I think she can play the heel factor better as well, kind of in a way takes Shayna's place. And yeah, I'm going with Bianca Belair. I only have one question for you, Kyle. Okay. Where is Charlotte Flair in this match? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you need to add some more, right? She's got to walk into that match with both the NXT Women's Championship and the uh, SmackDown everything. title. Everything. Uh, then they're going to redo that photo that you just oh, did yeah. with the NXT yeah. Women's Championship around her neck. Bro, we totally forgot about the <laughs> NXT UK Women's Championship match. Tony Storm, might as, Tony Storm might as well be over here defending against Charlotte, too. There you go. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, as for Io and Kari, I think they're going to be called up as a tag team eventually mm-hmm. and be in that tag team division that they keep hyping up that – has literally maybe one and a half teams that I actually think is legit. I'd literally consider Boston Hug, Iconics, and maybe Tamina and, and Nia as the real teams. That's it. You don't have anybody else. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe the Riot Squad, maybe... I mean, Mandy Rose and, and Sonya Deville are such an odd pairing because they don't, they don't clash, they don't mesh well together. Like, they... They're two different characters together. Boston Hug kind of makes sense. Um, the Iconics are both literally twins. And, <laughs> and Tamina and Nia are just big, giant Smoans. So, you know, that makes sense alone right there. Then you have, like, Mandy and Sonya. Sonya is like this ultimate fighting badass, you know, tie your hair up chick. And then you have Mandy Rose, who's like the golden goddess. So it really doesn't, like, they don't go well together. Um, so anyways, um, move on to the main event. NXT Championship, two of the three falls match. Johnny Gargano, Johnny Takeover, who's actually gone on Twitter and said that he's going to have a special Takeover t-shirt Ooh. for uh, Takeover for all the people asking. Is so it stick hard. figures? I hope not. <laughs> I'm only buying stick figure t-shirts, okay? Johnny, do it. Anyways, um... I am so pumped for this match. Sorry if my voice isn't <laughs> sounding like good tonight, guys. I am very, very tired tonight. I've had a long, long week working a ma- m- an amount of hours just because I'm taking a whole week off for Mania next next week. So I've been working a shit ton so I can make up for it. Um, and I just worked today before the show. So anyways, I'm excited for this match. <laughs> My voice is not saying it. I'm very hyped for this match. I'm going to be marking out like crazy at the event. Two out of three falls, Cole in Gargano. Like, just there to be take all my money. Just take it all. Everything I just saved up, just take it all. Because I'm going to be so pumped for this match. I'm going to be rocking my Johnny. I'm probably going to bring this t-shirt I'm wearing on camera, my Johnny Takeover shirt, or wear the new one that they're going to be selling. Um, And I'm going to be on cloud nine for this. It's going to be so good. You can't tell me that 
these two guys in a ring together can't put on a five-star match. This is going to be a five-star match. And we are going to get one for the ages, folks. So sit down, grab your popcorn, whatever you eat during the paper, <laughs> and enjoy because you're going to get straight-up chemistry, beautiful chemistry out of this match. Twitty Falls is tough. So um, it's not going to go 2-0. That never goes two zero. If it, it's I think it's happened once. I hate um, it when they do two and zero. It's like it makes it the other make person sense. look so bad. It's, right. it's so. So it's not going to happen here. So it's going to be one one. In terms of winner, this literally could go two ways, and well, yeah, because it's two people. I mean, it's two people, but literally, <laughs> there's not an obvious pick here. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, you can go in two different directions. You can have give it to Johnny because. He's not getting called up anymore because of the Tommaso Ciampa injury. Keep him with the championship until take over Toronto in the summer, and then that's where you do the final shebang between him and Ciampa. Or you give it to Adam Cole. He finally has the big championship. He's the dude that's running NXT. You have Undisputed Era maybe create some tension, and this is where it drives the storyline of Cole and Roderick Strong. Maybe they go into that in the next takeover, and then Johnny's maybe getting called up to the main roster. So I, I think if Cole wins the championship here, Johnny's still getting called up to the main roster. I don't think he's sticking around in NXT. If he wins the championship here, he sticks around in NXT. So this is literally going to come down. This is literally like, you know, career on the line match for Johnny NXT career in the line match for Johnny in a way. So I'm going to personally go because I love both ideas. I'm still going to go with Johnny Gargano winning the championship here. And I think they really, really, I think triple H wants and, and everyone has worked so hard on this feud. They want it to end in NXT. It should be ending in NXT in reality. This match, this, this feud cannot be ending on the main roster. It doesn't make sense because they had nothing to do with the main roster at all in this entire feud. They got called up as a babyface tag team, which is stupid as fuck because they were feuding against each other in NXT at the same exact time. This is NXT's baby. This is the best feud of our generation. It's the longest reigning feud of our generation. It's literally our rock and Austin of this generation. It's been the best built feud I've ever seen since Rock and Austin. It's just, it's so good. It needs to end in NXT. We need to see a finish. We have not seen the finish yet. And I know they have this written down already of how they're going to finish it. We saw a glimpse of it before Tommaso Ciampa got injured. They redid the freaking spot from the original part of this feud with Johnny being the one throwing Ciampa into the screen. I was hoping for that to happen at TakeOver Phoenix, and it didn't. I was so close. But we got to see that NXT, and we're like, oh my god, this is the end. This is going to be the big climax. Because of the injury, we're not getting it. So, I think Gargano wins the championship here. He takes it. He holds it all the way to NXT TakeOver Toronto. Apparently, and this is why I think of it, because apparently Gargano's surgery was really successful, and he's already on a fast track to... Uh, rehabilitation. So uh, you mean you mean Champa? Champa, sorry. Uh, as to really to re- rehab, and he's he's doing well. So that's huge. And for him to be already in a fast track, and we're still in March, signs are pointing that he'll be back in time for whatever ending at Takeover Toronto, or 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 he still returns to Takeover Toronto, but is not in a match. He he interferes at the end of whatever match Johnny has at that. It, it, what if he drops a title then or whatever? And that's where they set up the feud for the following takeover, which is takeover Chicago at Survivor Series. And that's where it ends. And that's funny that I say that because where did this feud all start? Takeover Chicago, number one. So, writing's on the wall, people. Writing's on the wall. We need to see this feud end in NXT. Johnny Gargano is going to be leaving NXT in New York, take over New York, WrestleMania weekend, as our new NXT champion. And once again, it will be called Johnny Champion. Mm. Michael, your turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not as, as enthusiastic as Kyle. But yes, I am. But, you know, I'm not going to go into that much detail. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I want... You know, I want Johnny to win. He deserves to win the big title, the North American Championship. How long did he have that for? Like, what, one, two weeks? He deserves to have the championship at least one time before he leaves. I don't want him to leave. That's why I want him to have the title, so that will block his way up to the main roster. 
Um, I honestly believe that Vince McMahon wanted DIY in the tag division of the main roster, which is why I just – Gargano by himself, I just don't see him going up to the main roster um, until Ciampa comes back. Right. I, I'm not saying I want them in the tag division, but I just see that's what what Vince's plan was. Um, but, yeah, I see Jar- uh, Gargano winning. Um, how it's going to go down – um, you know, you, Kyle, you mentioned this uh, a couple of weeks ago. You mentioned that maybe uh, Cole might lose as the result of Roderick Strong. So I'm gonna go with that one. That one sounds really good. Oh, so I'm gonna go he's Gargano. Gonna him over. Yeah, well, you, that's what you said. And I said that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go with Kyle's prediction from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Roderick Strong comes um, because you, you missed the segment they had on this week's NXT, right, Kyle? Yes, I only saw a couple of highlights. He, yeah, so Adam Cole on the way out, he says there's two reasons why I'm going to win at uh, NXT TakeOver New York. One, and then the rest of the Undisputed Era came out. And then he said two, because that because we're undisputed. And that, you know, there you go. So it's, it's him hinting at the fact that Undisputed Era will be down by ringside. I'm going to go with your idea. I feel like Roderick Strong is going to try and do something. He's thinking he's helping, but accidentally maybe – Hits Adam Cole as a result, leading to Gargano getting the win. And yeah. Oh, man. Maybe Johnny wins it, but not clean. It's a tarnished win because Roderick Strong screws Adam Cole over. And that's the big swerve. Mm. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Johnny still wins, but maybe he's knocked out. He doesn't see Strong screw over Cole. And, you know, he could say that he'd be Adam Cole clean, even though strong maybe cheated you know what i mean so it's it's a clean win but it's tarnished ah man right. that would be insane I'd, I'd mark out for that too uh, and then corporate cow would be happy because he loved roger strong before he joined the undisputed era <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah we literally have similar picks except for I, one match it's gonna come down to one match again there you go guys it's kyle versus michael chow matt matt riddle has michael chow in his corner velveteen dream has kyle in this corner he'll be mm-hmm. escorted to the ring by us truly so there you go i wish that'd be cool <laughs> i know i'd be like bro 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 yes yes i guess i'd look like you gotta carry the couch Hogan, that velveteen. <laughs> yeah there you go you gotta carry the couch that velveteen dreams on yeah i'll just raise up above my arms <laughs> there you go <laughs> we'll do like a gladiator theme <laughs> oh man anyways um